The CR Basic Editor is a PC-compatible software application for writing data logger programs in Campbell Scientific's CR Basic programming language. When the editor is first opened, a template program is displayed for the data logger type chosen. The data logger type listed on line 1 of a CR Basic program determines the default instruction set, compiler, and help files to use for a program. In this video series, I will discuss the fundamental components of a CR Basic program beginning with variables and progressing to more advanced programming techniques, such as functions and subroutines. The CR Basic Editor is included in software such as LoggerNet and PC400. It's important to note that there are a variety of resources available to help create a CR Basic program, including several videos and tutorials on the Campbell Scientific website. If the program requirements are simple, the program can likely be created and maintained exclusively with the shortcut Program Generator, a free programming wizard that simplifies the creation of data logger programs. Or, a program can be started in Shortcut and then customized in CR Basic. The intent of the CR Basic programming series is to demonstrate all of the necessary components of CR Basic to gain a better understanding how programs work. The first video in the series will focus on variables. For now, I'll start with the first element of any program, variables. Variables are used to specify a place in memory to store the result of a measurement. It's helpful to think of variables as containers that hold information. Variable names can be up to 39 characters in length. They must start with a letter, underscore, or dollar sign. They are not case sensitive. Variables can be declared as public or dim. Public variables are visible in the data logger's real-time tables whereas dim variables cannot be viewed in real-time. Instead, they are used behind the scenes in calculations or other processes. Variable names should be descriptive to keep track of what they're used for, but long names take up more storage memory, so it's best to avoid long names. For this demonstration, I'm using a CR1000X data logger. Because I'm focusing on variables in this exercise, I'm going to delete the template and start with a blank page. I will start by entering a couple of blank lines, so I have room to write comments later. Before I get started, I will save the program so I can save changes often. For complex programs, it is best to save a version number of the program as well, to track changes as the program is completed. By default, CR Basic programs are stored in C, Campbell Sci, CR Basic Editor. It's useful to give descriptive program names, so even months after a program is written, it is easy to tell what a program does based on its name. The public declaration is used to declare variables. I can either type the word public, or I can put my cursor where I want the instruction to be and click insert from the instruction in the list. The public declaration has two components, name and a data type. The name is a label. It should be descriptive to easily identify measurements in public tables but no longer than necessary to save storage space. The data type descriptor is optional. If data type is not specified, it will default to type float. I'll start by adding a variable named decimal. By default, variables will be of type float, because this is the type used most often to store measurements. Float variables can hold numbers with decimal points and have about seven digits of precision. Now I will add another variable named other decimal. This time, I will specify the variable as type float. This is actually the exact same format that's used if I don't specify the variable type. I can also add variables in the dialog box that opens when I right-click on the public declaration. Now I will add a variable named counter that is type long, and another variable named myString that is type string. I can type multiple variables on one line, just separated by a comma, or use individual public statements on separate lines. Either way is fine. It just depends on how I want to organize the variables. Long variables are integers and will not include decimal values. For string variables, the default size is 24 bytes. So if I don't specify a size, that's what it will be. If I need more than 24 bytes, I type asterisk followed by the number of bytes needed. Don't make string variables longer than needed because that can waste a lot of memory. Now I will add a variable named flag as boolean. Boolean variables are used for conditions that only have two states, like on or off, or true or false. Next, I will add a variable named big number as double. It holds much bigger numbers with twice the precision of a regular float. Finally, I will add one last variable called hidden value. 
I will declare the hidden value variable as dim, which means it will not be visible in the public table or the monitor data tab. Dim variables are usually used in calculations or processing. They hold values that do not need to be displayed. Now I have added all the variable types I want to demonstrate, so I'm ready to compile and send my program. But look what happens when I try to compile the program. I get a no begin program in program error. This is an important point. All programs must have begin program and end program declarations. All instructions for the main program fall between the begin program and end program statements, while program variables, data tables, and subroutines must be defined before the main program. This structure is demonstrated in the template program I looked at earlier. But for this lesson, I'm just demonstrating variables, so I won't be entering any measurements. I will just add begin program and end program to the program so it will compile. Now the program compiles, but notice that there are still some warnings that I have declared variables that are not used in the program. That's because for now, the variables are not being used in any instructions or expressions. This is okay because the only purpose of this program is to demonstrate the type of data the different variable types can hold. Notice when I click Send, I get a warning to collect data. In most real-world cases, I would want to collect data before sending a new program because if I didn't, I may lose data. Now I'm going to use the Monitor Data tab to view the public table. In the public table, I see all the variables I declared in the program except for the hidden value variable that I declared as type dim. I also see a timestamp because the public table displays values in real time. There is also a record number to tell me how many times a scan has run. In this case, the record number will not increment because I currently don't have a scan set in the program. I'll come back to that later. Now I want to demonstrate the different types of data these different variable types can hold. It is important to note that I am not changing any values in the program. The CR Basic program will stay the same until I go and edit the code in the CR Basic editor. Remember that both decimal and other decimal are the default data type, which is float. A variable of type float means the value stored in the variable can have decimal places. The default float type has up to seven digits of precision. The counter variable is type long, which means it will not hold a decimal. In PC400, only integers can be entered. If a number containing a decimal is entered, that number is ignored and the original value will remain. The myString variable is type string, so it can hold numbers or letters. But it is important to know that math cannot be done on strings. Most often, strings are text values. The flag variable is type boolean. I can name these whatever I want, like lights on, lights off, running, not running, open, or closed. Traditionally, people call variables that control a two-state condition flags, or in the industrial world, they're called coils. A boolean can only hold two states, true or false. Zero equals false, and anything non-zero is true. The big number variable can hold a big number because it is type double. It can have up to 15 digits of precision. If I need a lot of precision, I will use a double, but know that doubles take up a lot more space and use a lot more processing memory for computations. I don't want to use doubles if I don't need them. Another option with variables is to declare a variable array rather than a single variable. This is done by including the number of elements in parentheses after the variable name. For example, public temp3 creates three variables, temp1, temp2, and temp3. Variable arrays serve many purposes, but are commonly used when repetitions are used with measurement instructions. CR Basic also supports two- and three-dimensional arrays. See the Using Variable Arrays, Repetitions, and Aliases video for more information. Now that I have shown how different types of variables hold different types of data, I will go back and add some more code to my program so I can show how variables are updated in real time based on a scan interval. I can initialize variables with a value if I don't want them to start at the default, which is zero. For example, I will initialize my decimal variable with a value of 123.45. And then, between begin program and end program, I will set other decimal equal to decimal plus 20. This is called an expression. I will use another expression to set counter equal to counter plus 1. Now, I will resend the program so I can see how these values look in the Monitor Data tab. Decimal is now 123.45, and since I set other decimal to decimal plus 20, it is 143.45. 
counter is 1 because counter started at the default value, which is 0, and then I added 1 to it. So the values I set in the program are visible in monitor data, but the values are not changing. To see the values change, I need to add a scan next scan declaration to the program. The scan declaration is used to tell the data logger how often to execute code or make measurements. The scan declaration has four parameters. Interval and units are used to specify how often the main scan will run. Or in other words, how often measurements will be made. The buffer option is used to set the number of buffers available in memory to handle processing instructions like averaging, totalizing, or calculating maximum and minimum values. The default buffer count is 3 and that is fine for most programs. In most cases, using the default value for a CR basic parameter is fine if the parameter value is unknown. The count parameter controls how long a scan will run. When count is zero, the main scan will keep running until the program is stopped. If I want a finite scan that only runs for a limited period, I can enter the number of times I want the scan to run. I will leave count at zero, so my program keeps running. I'm going to use a scan interval of one second. Now, what's different in the Data Monitor tab? The first thing to note is the record number is now incrementing once a second because my program has a one second scan rate. Decimal is still 123.45 because that's what I initialize this variable to. Other decimal is still 143.45 because in my program, I initialize decimal to 123.45 and then in my main program scan, I set other decimal equal to the decimal value plus 20. Since my program is not changing the value of decimal, the value of other decimal stays the same too. Counter is incrementing once a second because I set counter equal to itself plus 1, which means 1 will be added to the counter on each scan. Because counter started at the default value of 0, the counter starts at 0 and adds 1 each time the scan runs. If I set counter to a new value, like negative 145, it will start with that value and add 1 each scan. I can change the value of other decimal, but on the next scan it will be overwritten because my program sets this variable to decimal plus 20 on each scan. I can also change the value of decimal and then other decimal will be equal to the new decimal value plus 20. In this video, I have shown how to declare variables and how to set different data types depending on the type of data that the variable needs to hold. I also showed how the scan next scan instructions are used to execute instructions on a time interval. In the next video, I will show how to set up data tables to store data to final storage. Remember, more details on variable types are found in the CR Basic Help under the public instruction. Also, look for other videos and tutorials on the Campbell Scientific website.